So many of you who may have been, um, shall we say, right wing watchers, just for just for the sake of at least knowing what's going on on the right side, will have noticed, uh, especially in the weeks before, a massive build up of the right wing, especially the uh, Eurosceptic side of things, talking a lot about Switzerland. Because, yes, a couple of years ago, Switzerland had a referendum. And basically, just very, very narrowly uh, voted to end freedom of movement, only by a couple of points, which may seem very a familiar scenario to a lot of people. Now, of course, uh, the Swiss have a thing where you must have a very clear majority on any rules or referendums. And as a result, they decided, well, what we'll do is we'll wait again for another couple of years to see what happened. And guess what? The Swiss have overwhelmingly voted to keep freedom of movement. Now, this was a thing that the right wing were hailing as this is, oh, this is going to be the end of, uh, once again, another EU killer, much like, again, Brexit was posed to be. But the Swiss overwhelmingly voted to keep it. And what surprisingly is that a lot of the slogans that the, that the right wing of the Swiss were trying to push to end freedom of movement were very, very similar to the slogans which were deployed during Brexit. And you have to ask that question of, well, what can we learn from uh, this referendum to take forward into the future? And what we can learn from it is, well, you know, that it is possible to return uh, people's opinion on these uh, types of things. And it is possible to have another referendum on these things. And we can change people's minds very, very quickly. So this goes uh, over this article. And it says, it basically, the title is the Swiss, the Swiss, the Swiss show why uh, we should not give up on rejoining the EU. The Swiss held two important national rep referendums last Sunday. The first one decisively uh, reversed a previous one of the 2014, which, by a wealth wafer thin majority, had sought to end freedom of movement for people within the EU putting the country's whole relationship with Europe in jeopardy. The lesson for Brexit Britain is, Swiss friend, is as a Swiss friend tells me, is that uh, on big issues, you should either allow for repeat referendums so that people can change their minds, or for none at all. If the people at large are going to take over, uh, take over the, uh, unlimit the ultimate foundation of Parliament, they need the same right as Parliament to debate on big uh, issues every few years. So a British opinion poll this week showed that 50% now think that Brexit was a mistake and only 39% still support it. A referendum to rejoin the EU next January rather <laughs> rather than uh, go off off the edge of a cliff edge uh, at the end of a transition period would probably secure a majority. Denmark and Ireland also tell a similar story of a narrow first referendum uh, rejections of pro-European policies being corrected by a decisive pro-EU majorities a second time round. On European policy alone, the Swiss have now held 13 referendums over the last half century, and 10 have gone in favour of closer relations with the EU, and 3 against, which reflects the general uh, general bias of Swiss statement about Europe, which is to get very close, but not to the point of full EU membership. And last Sunday, the other major Swiss, Swiss referendum makes the point too. It was on granting two weeks paid maternity leave to fathers. Fear of a referendum defeat in the notoriously conservative Alpine uh, country led the Swiss government to delay this social reform long introduced across the rest of Europe. Diana Gianna Gattalta of the populist Swiss People's Party leading the opposition to the proposal said, We shouldn't be financing things that are nice to have but not essential, whereas maternity leave was important because a mother has to breastfeed and physically recover from childbirth. The same vital role did not apply to the father, she added, and the 40% of people who voted against paying maternity leave appear to, appear to have agreed with her. All this goes back to the Swiss, to Switzerland's better uh, uh, Switzerland's bitter experience, uh, um, um, oh, amazing uh, in retrospect, 
with women's suffrage. Swiss women did not get the vote in national elections until 1971, and not until the 1990s in the last of these um, con uh, con congregations because of referendum defeats. The previous fe federal referendum on giving women the vote in 1959 saw it rejected by more than two thirds, uh, by, more than, by more than two to one by Switzerland's men. It took 12 years to reverse this. It was, uh, it was a two to one vote the other way that time. I don't relish the thought of 13 British referendums on Europe, but two so far have been horrendous enough. But to do the right thing for the country, its security and prosperity, we will probably need a third referendum, either on rejoining the EU or a Swiss-style plan for close relationship. And the question is when? In my view, the sooner the better. It can't come uh, after the next uh, general election, and even only if the Tories lose. So it could be for at least another six years at the earliest, which will be uh, a decade since the fateful 2016 referendum. With a positive outcome, it will probably still take several more years, probably into the 2030s, for a closer relationship with the EU to take effect. So pro-Europeans, therefore, need to be campaigning from now for Britain's opposition parties to get into the next election with a policy of ne negotiating a closer relationship with the EU, including the option of a referendum to rejoin. It is depressing that Lib Dems, the most natural pro-European party of all the parties, were persuaded by their leadership at the conference this week to make rejoining a long-term, not a short-term, goal. John Miller Keynes may be the greatest Liberal in history and gave the compelling riposte uh, to that, in the long run, we are all dead. He famously said this in the 1930s of attempts to delay the, imp uh, the, uh, the implementation of his radical ideas to tackle unemployment. Maybe, he'd been maybe if he'd been talking to the Swiss women campaigning for the vote. So, it really is, um, I'd say, possible. Because, as we've said before on this channel, all it's going to take is just us having closer and closer relations. And trust me, it is in our favour to get a deal. If you are pro-European, then you want to get a deal. Because all this will do is this will just get industries... And it will be the industries that get will get onto Parliament and be the biggest pushers of, yet yeah, we need closer integration with the EU, having a, a and we will just slide back in. And it will just be that. And trust me, it will be, as was said there, it will be a lot sooner rather than later um, getting these, um, you know, close relationships in the EU. Because as soon as we start to have these close relationships, then it has to be asked this question of was Brexit the right idea? And the answer will be no, because even though we will have these close relationships with the EU, a lot of the uh, parliamentarians and the businesses will then go, well, hang on, we don't have the say over the laws that we used to have when we're in the European Union. Maybe we should actually just join the European Union again. So as you can see, this, just by you know pure logic, is just a straight natural progression. And it's just, it really just is a matter of time. And, you know, we are about to see just how bad it is being outside the European Union. We've had 40 years of what it was like being in it. Of, you know, amazing economic success stories. That's not going to be the case from January of next year. And, you know, hard times cometh. And there are a lot of people are going to ask this question of, hmm. Strange how we're having all these hard times now after Brexit when we were promised something completely different. So, as always, uh, please do hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, if you are new, we talk about, you know, Brexit and British politics. A bit of both. But, you know, the are two are basically inseparable at this point. So, as always, there are links down below to my Patreon page and one-off donation links should you like to support the channel in that way. And, until next time... Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again.